Hello and welcome to today's YouTube video on AWS Private Hosted Zone. Okay, which is a which is from Route 53 service. Okay, so in this video we'll uh, deep dive into this particular topic. Okay, and let me uh, give you give you some uh, brief introduction about what is Private Hosted Zone. So. It is a container that holds information about how you want Amazon Route 53 to respond to DNS queries. Okay, it, it is for a domain, it, it subdomains within one or more VPCs. Okay, so keep in mind it is for it is associated associated to a VPC. Okay. So this is how it looks. Okay, so this is my virtual private cloud. And this is my private hosted zone. Okay, I have some of my uh, these IPs are here. Okay, so what we usually do is we add, let's say, if I have a, a VPC uh, over here, okay, in that in a particular availability zone, I have an EC2 instance running. So, what I'll do is uh, I'll grab the uh, its private IP address. Okay, I will, add, I will add an E record in this private hosted zone and I'll try to ping it from another instance, okay, but that particular DNS, whatever we have defined over here. Remember, it is uh, associated with VPC and it is not uh, like uh, the data does not flow to internet, okay. So let's uh, dive deep into it by creating a private hosted zone and I will replicate this scenario in my AWS management console. All right, so I'm logged into the AWS Management Console and I'm into Route 53 service. Okay, uh, let me head over to the hosted zone. I already have one hosted zone created, which is for which is a public hosted zone. I'll, uh, I will create a new one. Okay, I'll call it as cloud perceptor dot link. Okay, and I'll uh, select private hosted zone from over here. Apart from that, I'll uh, also need to select what region. Okay, select my local region. I'll select default VPC over here. Okay, and uh, if you want, you can add tags over here, but since we are going to delete it, I'm not adding any more tags. Click on create hosted zone. Okay, it may take a moment to create it. As you can see, it has already created this hosted zone, private hosted zone, wherein we have two records uh, created, which is for name server and SOA, okay. So let's head over back to EC2. We need an instance to be created as well, okay. So, head over to instances. I already have one public instance created over here. Okay, so let me launch a similar one with a private instance. Okay. If you want, you can select the key pair, otherwise that's okay. Uh, let me select the one over here. Okay. Say T2 micro, EFS instances, default. We'll be selecting a private subnet over here. Okay. We don't need any uh, public IP, so we'll leave, leave it. Okay. And from the existing security group, let's see what exactly it is. Let's compare the Okay, it looks good. Storage I will keep as 8 gigabytes. Alright, everything looks good. So I'm going to launch the instance now. 
simultaneously i'm also going to, going to launch my public instance as well okay all right let's wait until this boots up okay meanwhile my hosted zone will also be ready so it is it is now in the running state we already have a private ip over here so copy this private ip okay and i'm going to create a record which is going to be a a record okay so i'll use simple routing okay as you know right there are different different types of routing policies i'll be explaining all these policies in detail in my upcoming video but uh see for this particular demo we are going to use only simple routing okay so it is like ip to domain mapping okay so you just provide a domain it will return an ip okay we are gonna define a simple record click on here uh subdomain let me <coughs> let me keep it as db okay db.cloudperceptor.link it's not a db but just to replicate a particular scenario we are naming it like this okay next uh, the record type you can select many options okay which are available for different different scenarios for our case uh, we are going to select a record okay which is routes traffic to an ipv4 address and some aws resources okay endpoint alias to a vpc endpoint okay just select and i think the instance is booting up just wait for a minute all right it's my bad uh, we don't need to select this vpc endpoint because we have not created any endpoint i'll simply select ip address or another value depending on the record type okay we'll paste the ip of our ec2 instance what we have copied this is a private ip address of our ec2 okay that we just created ttl i'll keep it as short that is 60 okay I click on define a simple record and remember if you click on define a simple record it's not going to create unless and until you click on this create records okay remember this you've got to click on this button and wait until it gets created okay as we can see now the a record is here it it can take some time to be available okay so meanwhile what we'll do is we'll log in to our private ip uh private ec2 okay and try to ping this uh particular domain over here okay so add back to ec2 dashboard i'll flick on see this is my public as you can see this is having a public ipv4 okay and this is not having any public ipv4 okay and even if we look at the uh security group right if you look at the route table of this particular subnet i'll show you it is not having any route to the internet gateway okay so let's see as you can see it's just a local route okay no route available to the internet kit so that means that this is absolutely a private instance okay all right now let's connect to our public ec2 the ttl value we have uh, reduced it to 60 because uh, the keeping 300 it can take some time to uh, make it available so that's the reason we have chosen a shorter value all right so i'll ping uh, from this instance to my to this particular domain as you can see we are receiving a ping right so that means the hosted zone is count configured correctly okay so yeah this is how you can configure a 
private hosted zone remember it's it's not it's not having any out to the internet it's not available from the internet but this is just uh, a scenario okay let's say you have a uh, on premise system okay like on premise uh, Intermarch network is there, and from there you want to access all these resources from AWS using a particular, uh, you know, domain internally. This is just for the internal use. Remember that point. Okay. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching this video, and do like and subscribe my channel. Thanks again.